Well, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. It is our privilege to be here at Loganville SDA, and uh, happy Sabbath to those that are joining us online as well. Um, my name is Tapiwa. I'm not actually a medical doctor, so you don't need to call me doctor. But uh, um, we do have a team from Wildwood that is seated at the back. We do have, um, maybe I'll start with my wife, Deborah, if you can just wave at everybody. And then we have Joylene, uh, Barbara, uh, Sister Kindra, and we have, um, I'll start with Shirley, if you just wave at people, then Carice, and then we have Judy as well, okay? So you, you get to talk to them afterwards. We come from Wildwood Health Institute down there in Georgia. And um, just want also to thank Sister Carolyn for reaching out to us, inviting us. Uh, I believe it's Health Ministry Sabbath today. So we want to, at least during Sabbath school, we want to tackle some matters on health. You know, health ministries became a very important department in the church with the pandemic. But uh, I, I want to convince you that it's always been important all throughout. All right. So without further ado, uh, this morning we're going to cover a subject. I've titled it um, Strengthening and Weakening. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Okay. Strengthening and Weakening. So one of the things that has happened since March 2020, I don't know where you were in March 2020, but you would have been under a rock somewhere to not know that something significant happened in this world, and it's the current pandemic that we're dealing with right now. Now, one of the questions that obviously comes to the mind what people ask, in fact, before I put this slide for you to see, people ask, how can I actually deal with this? How can I... Um, cure myself or anything like that, but I want to begin with a quote from a book called Medical Ministry. It says, teach the people that it is better to do what? Okay, to know how to keep well than how to cure disease. How many of you agree with this statement? All right. Now, if you don't agree with this statement, let me put it to you this way. Would you rather have cancer and then learn how to cure it by having it, or would you rather just not have it at all, right? I'm sure everyone in this room will say, I'd just rather not have it at all, right? So the principle that we want to work with is it is better to know how to stay well rather than how to get sick, and then I need to try and, and get well after being sick. Now, having said that, we also need to understand what is health. We want to begin with what is health. So I'm going to throw a question out to the audience because this is Sabbath school time. We need to study together, interact. And God says, come now, let us reason together. So if you think of health, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Picture-wise. When you think of health. Okay, I hear life, I hear food. Thank you for mentioning food, all right. Anything else, Joely? Someone in the gym. Someone in the gym, okay. Happiness. Happiness, all right. So notice, there is life, there's food, there is someone in the gym, there's happiness. So people have different kind of pictures of health, right? And health is something we discuss a lot. Now, typically, whenever I put up health, and if you were to do a survey in a church and you said, okay, health, what do you think? Most people are going to draw an apple because they just, you know, an apple and health, that's what we normally see, right? So you think of health, you think, okay, healthy eating. Now, some of you, you live here in the Atlanta area. You know that sometimes when you're sitting in the traffic that you sit in in Atlanta, suddenly if, some, if we were to take your blood pressure, your numbers are going up whilst you are sitting. You haven't even put anything in your mouth, but your numbers are going up. Now, I want you, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to look at uh, a scripture, Matthew chapter 9. We're going to open verse 2. And I want you to see a very interesting principle in Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. And again, we're dealing with this issue of strengthening and weakening. So we want to see what health is defined as in the Bible. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, are you there? All right, so notice what the Bible says. In fact, before I read, let me just pray again. Father in heaven, as we are opening your scriptures, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, 
and to help us during our study time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible reads, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of what? Palsy. Now, what is palsy? Is it a physical ailment, or is it a mental ailment, or is it something else? Physical. So keep this in mind. The problem with the man is actually, in fact, uh, I hope you can still see from this, but the problem with the man is physical. Okay. And he's been brought to Jesus with a physical problem. Then the verse continues, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy. Now, what does Jesus say to the man? Two things he says. Okay. So notice, be of good cheer. And what's the second thing he says? Okay. Your sins are forgiven. Now, here's a question for you, and I'm not asking you any trick questions. Be of good cheer. What would you say that deals with? Physical, mental, or spiritual health? Mental. Mental. Okay. So I want you to notice when Jesus starts addressing this man, keep in mind his problem is a physical problem. But Jesus begins with be of good cheer. So he addresses the mental aspect. Then he addresses your sins be forgiven you. Which category would that be? Spiritual, Spiritual, right? So I want you to notice that in Christ's approach to the man's physical issue, he had to deal with the mental and he had to deal with the spiritual. Now, simply put, health encompasses physical, mental, and spiritual. We cannot approach health just from a one-dimensional point of view. And again, if you notice on the slides, Jesus defined health. Uh, Matthew 9, verse 12, he makes this point that they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick, right? And then John 5, 6, will thou be made whole? Notice Jesus keeps bringing up this aspect of wholeness, right? Now, you cannot be whole if you're only talking about physical aspects. You cannot, be, you cannot only be whole if it's just the mental aspect or it's just the spiritual aspect. It needs to be all three in campus. Does that make sense? All right. So we carry on. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with, notice, all thine heart. In the Old Testament, heart is referring to the mind, okay? All thine heart, which is mental aspect. And with all thy soul, which is the spiritual aspect, and with all thy might. Now, this is not saying that you have a soul. That's not what that's saying. It's just kind of, I hope you get me on that. So Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, right? Then the basis of complete health now, notice this, Exodus 15, 26. Someone recently asked me, does this verse apply in COVID times? Does this verse apply in 2021, right? It says, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in whose sight? His sight. That's the key thing, in God's sight. Not necessarily in Tapiwa's sight or, or in someone else's sight or in your own sight. In his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee promise from God. Now, you know, one thing that has been comforting me lately, the promises of God don't have an expiry date. Have you ever seen that? It's not like Walmart where you buy something and then you're in a rush because it's going to expire next week. No, with God's promises, they don't expire, okay? But I want you to notice that the basis of health, based on this verse, is obedience, Obedience is the basis of health. Now, I need to convince you on this point. So we're going to go back to the big picture of the Bible. Now, when Adam was made, Adam and Eve, were Adam and Eve healthy or were they unhealthy? Healthy, right? So at the the creation, man was holy, man was healthy, man was happy, and man was obedient. You can find that in Genesis um, 1.31, God looked at everything. It was very good, right? And that word very good can throw us off because that actually means it was beyond perfect, okay? 
but very good just kind of makes it seem like, oh, okay, it's looking good today. But it was, it was very good. But notice that one of the gifts from creation is health. Health was embedded from creation. Now, if I was to ask a congregation, define health, most people would say health is the absence of sickness. That's how they would define health. But here's the problem. If you were to ask Adam at creation, hey, Adam, define health, Adam doesn't know what sickness is, so he's not going to define it based on sickness. Adam is just going to define health as, hey, that's the normal. That's, that's how I'm made. I'm healthy. So health, we need to look at health as a gift from creation, from the very uh, makeup of man. Then notice in Genesis 3, we have the story of the fall of man. Mankind became disobedience, which led to unhappiness, which led to unholiness, and which led to unhealthiness. But notice that disobedience was a choice that unfortunately was made. So health has to be linked. If we're trying to help each other with our health, choice has to be involved. You cannot deal with health matters without choice being a factor in there. Because it took a choice from Adam and Eve to lose their health, and it will take also a choice to regain our health. Does that make sense? All right, we're together so far. And then notice God's plan in Isaiah 53. We're told that Jesus took upon himself. In fact, let's read Isaiah 53. We need to read some text here. Isaiah 53. There is a beautiful promise regarding redemption. And again, please, when you're there, let me know by saying amen. amen. Okay. Isaiah 53, notice verse 4 and verse 5. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The promise in, in Exodus, I am the Lord that healeth you, Isaiah now says, with his stripes, basically we are healed. So I want you to notice that in the plan of salvation, part of the thing that Jesus is also addressing is the healing of mankind. You know, there's a song we, we sing, Does Jesus Care? Yes he, yes, he does. Indeed, he does. You have a little cold, you have a little whatever thing troubling you, does Jesus care? Yes, he does. Believe it or not, he does. Because Jesus is not only interested in your spiritual well-being, he's interested in your physical well-being and in your mental well-being, the whole person, okay? So the, the God's plan is restoration of man so that man can be holy, healthy, happy, obedient. There won't be coronavirus in heaven. On the new earth, there won't be diabetes, hypertension, any of these things. We, in fact, I think that would be one of our biggest challenges in adaptation, just getting used to life without any problem. Imagine that. No anxiety. And you just walk with the angels, and the angels are saying, oh, that's normal. And you're like, oh, I'm just getting used to this. And I have eternity to get used to this. Isn't that such a beautiful thing? All right. Moving on. All right, so the pandemic, we need to, to at least tackle that because this is something that we are living through right now. How do we relate Bible instruction to some of the things that we're going through right now? Let's read this verse together, Psalm 139, 14. On three, one, two, three. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Now, there is a way that God made the human body. And you know, just like with anything, I need to use this chart a little bit. Uh, 
Brother Dave, I'm going to use a little bit more of your pages. All right, thank you. I have your permission. So, how many of you know how a house is built? All right, foundational foundation first, right? So let's say this is our foundation. Now, why would it be a bad idea maybe to just go on and start building your, your building without a foundation? All right, you want it to stand. There was a story in the news a few, I think maybe two years ago, there was an earthquake in Taiwan, and there was one building which completely collapsed. All the other buildings around it were fine. Now, when the investigators came to look at, you know, what happened, they wanted to understand why did this building fall, they discovered that the builders, instead of using concrete for their pillars, they had cut some corners and they put oil cans, empty oil cans, inside the, the pillar, okay? And of course, when the earthquake hit, everything collapsed, and they ended up jailing those guys. But in the creation of mankind, there is... There are some basic foundations that God laid for the working of the human machinery. And we call the basic foundation the laws of health, right? Eight laws I heard over there, right? Now, some of these things are basic. What is one thing that you do on a daily basis that involves food? <laughs> okay. And some of you are being pious right now, like you don't eat. But one of the things you do is every single human being needs to eat. Okay? Nutrition is very important. And guess what? Every cell in the body needs nutrients. All right? Now, another thing which is foundational, and you, this probably like some review for some of you, is this thing called exercise. Now, if you're like me, this thing is not pleasant, but you only have to do it because you know it's good for you, okay? Now, some, some of you, you're naturally attracted to exercise. God bless you. Some of us, we need more persuading to actually do it, but it's a foundation. Then we have water. Our cells, again, without water, they will die. If you think I'm making this up, do an experiment. Try and see how long you can go without water. And I, I would not advise you to do that, but you are welcome to try it if you want. Then we have sunshine as the next foundational pillar, pillar right? My wife, Deborah, you can, she's a different person when it's winter and when it's summer, right? Sunshine has an ability to do some, something to... I grew up in England, and the, the, the British have a, a reputation for not being the, the happiest people on planet Earth. Uh, we have a lot of gray skies over there. Then we also have another foundational pillar, which is temperance or self-control. Too much of a, bad, of a good thing can also be bad for you, okay? Then we have air. We all breathe in this room. We're actually breathing right now. Without breathing, we'd all be six feet under right now, then, believe it or not, there's also rest. Rest is very important. The body uh, regenerates during times of rest. Then we have probably the most important one, which is trust in God. Without trusting God, we wouldn't really say, well, nutrition is important, exercise is important. We wouldn't take those things because there's no foundation to it. So trust in God is the pillar that holds all the other ones. Now, I say this to get back to this. Um, one of the questions that has been coming, especially to Wildwood right now, is what additional actions can one take to lower their risk for potential long-term complications of COVID-19? And, you know, I, I I'm sometimes said that I don't take things seriously, but my obvious answer is the best way to avoid long-term complications is basically not to get the virus, right? But, but we have to live in a realistic state. We may end up getting the virus, so what is actually the best way to deal with it? And everything is going to go back to our laws of health or our foundations. 
Go with me to Psalm 11 and verse 3. And whoever wants, please read for us Psalm 11, verse 3. Psalm 11, verse 3. And again, remember we're talking foundations right now. Okay, so notice the Bible says if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now think of it as these are the foundations for your human machinery to work at its optimal level. If those are destroyed, what can the righteous do or what can you know, those doing the right thing, basically what will that amount to? And notice this. In this picture here, you have a cold, you have asthma, you have cancer, and I'm going to throw in coronavirus, and I'm going to ask you a question. What do those four things have in common? COVID, cancer, a common cold, and asthma. Well, breathing, respiratory, okay, I hear that. Anything else? Okay, immune system, right? That's the one I'm looking for. So all of these are actually, the common link is, it requires your body being compromised in one aspect or another in order to get it. The immune system must be impacted in order to actually get any kind of disease. Now notice this. Uh, and again, another Bible principle, Mark chapter 3. You can open it in your Bible if you want. It's on the screen. Jesus, talking about this issue of being conquered, said, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. The Amplified Version says, But no one can go into a strong man's house and steal his property, unless he first overpowers and ties up the strong man, and then he will ransack and rob his house. Now, let's put this in a practical application. My brother, what's your name? Ilya. Ilya. Okay, so Ilya, if, if I was a robber coming to your house at 10 p.m. and you knew I was coming to your house, what are you going to do? If I knew you were coming? Yes. Prepare myself. You're going to prepare yourself? Okay. And, uh, okay, so you prepare yourself. I still show up. I'm like, hey, Ilya, I want your car. I want all these things. What's your response to that? Not going to happen. Not going to happen, Right. But notice now what Jesus is saying. Now think of Ilya and think of the strong man as your immune system. Your immune system, when we're talking about health, is the strong man. right? Your immune system hears that, okay, you know what, there is uh, conditions out there. The immune system is, with with the foundations, the immune system is, is prepared, it's ready. Common cold comes, the immune system says, not today, that's not happening, right? And anything else keeps coming, it's like, not today. But, again, illustration. So notice, when this man is sick, in the corner, top right corner, it means that the strong man or the immune system has been bound. And we need to look at what is it that binds the strong man. What is it that actually works against our immune system? Now, Dr. Carice this afternoon will go through some of the practical realities. I want to encourage you to be there in the afternoon. But we're going to go to actually a story. Now, the Bible, and I keep using the Bible, the Bible is actually the greatest medical book ever written. Because the Bible deals with physical, mental, and spiritual health. It's not just for spiritual issues. We're told that it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, right? So 2 Corinthians, there's a story we're going to look at. That's why I took this theme of strengthening and weakening, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 32, and uh, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 to begin with. The Bible reads, After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against 
Jerusalem. Right. So notice there was this king of Assyria called Sennacherib. Now, let me ask you a rather obvious question. Were the Assyrians friendly to, the, to God's people? Enemies. Now, what do enemies typically do? They destroy. They come to steal. They come to kill. They come to destroy. In fact, verse 2 tells you that he had come. He hadn't come for potluck. He had come to fight Jerusalem, to destroy and he came against the fenced cities. Now, I want you for a second to think of COVID as Sennacherib. COVID did not come to play games. It did not come to, to just have a good time with you. It came to fight. It came to kill. It came to destroy. That's in general, most diseases are not there for your own good. They're actually there to, to try and, and damage you. So now, if we were to think of COVID as Sennacherib, as the enemy, then we need to actually get some principles of, okay, so how did King Hezekiah approach Sennacherib, his Sennacherib? And it continues. In fact, okay, before we go there, and notice this is uh, thoughts from the front line. This is from a doctor called Ron, we Ron Weiss. Uh, he's a primary care and urgent care physician. He said the majority of these patients, he's talking about COVID patients, have an underlying chronic illness as most Americans do. Whether it's being overweight or obese or having cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, congestive heart failure or asthma, what strikes me is that the patient is generally unaware of their underlying diseases, sorry, unaware that their underlying diseases can pose more of a risk for the poor outcome in COVID-19. Now, what this doctor was observing was actually most people coming in have an underlying condition. In simple terms, or in terms of this presentation, the doctor was saying that there are cords that are binding the strong man that people are coming in with when they're having COVID. And he was basically saying that there are other conditions uh, that are compromising their ability to actually deal with this thing. And early, early on in the pandemic, they actually found that most people that had fatal cases, the, the fatal aspect of the cases was because of another underlying condition. So when people tended to get COVID, it made, say, let, let's say uh, they have cardiovascular disease, it impacted their heart muscles in such a way that the cardiovascular disease actually became worse and, and someone died, okay? So COVID was actually jumping on the bandwagon of something else and making it worse. Now, again, almost 90% of those hospitalized for COVID-19 have pre-existing diseases, such as diabetes, hypertension, heart, heart conditions, chronic obstructive lung, lung disease, uh, liver disease, or serious obesity. Now, this is another area which we are not necessarily dealing with, but it's an area that affects the foundations. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do, is what the Bible asks. So basically, if we wanted our strong man, if we wanted Elia to be ready for that, we would need at least to help him to be free from all these other things that are binding him so that his immune system is able to tackle the new challenge strong. Does that make sense? All right. So we go back to Second Chronicles, I hope. My next slide. All right. Oh, okay. So just think of those conditions as the things that are binding the immune system. The immune system is busy dealing with that, that another thing, a pandemic, is just kind of troubling it. Now, notice what Hezekiah does next. It says he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without or which were outside the city, and they did help him. Now, question for you, why did he take that move? Why did he stop the waters? The what? Okay. So I hear you can't live without water very long, right? So imagine 
This is our Jerusalem. Hezekiah understands that, hey, outside Jerusalem, there's water flowing, and the water is actually kind of, maybe there's a way that it's coming out. The first thing Hezekiah does is, we need to stop the flow of water. Can't live without water very long, right? And imagine you are waiting for these guys to surrender. Well, the issue now is, how long are you going to wait without water? Or maybe you're just going to give up and go home, all right? Then notice the second thing he does. So he stops the water. Uh, okay. Then he says, So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains. So not just once one thing, they stopped all of them. And the brook that ran through the midst of the land saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? So Hezekiah decides the enemy must be starved of water. Uh, and I'm just going to put it here, starved of life source. Okay, Water is a life source. So what Hezekiah is doing here is he's weakening the enemy. Because you imagine they have all their horses, they have all their soldiers, and suddenly if they run out of water, they become discouraged. In fact, in Exodus 6, uh, 15, the children of Israel on the Exodus, they ran out of drinking water, and they started murmuring. And they started having kind of some, some issues there. Then the next thing Hezekiah does... Uh, my clicker, okay... It says, also, he strengthened himself. So notice two things that he did. He weakens the enemy, and then he strengthens himself. Now, this is the approach we need to apply when we're dealing with COVID. We need to sit down, and we need to say, what is it that would weaken COVID? And what is it that would strengthen my immune system to deal with COVID. Strengthen and weaken, both aspects, okay? So when we talk about strengthening, again, we're talking about the strong man, our immune system. Exercise, simple rest, nutrition, those are immune strengthening activities, okay? When I talk about nutrition, I'm talking mainly plant-based nutrition, okay? They've actually found that one of the things COVID loves, it loves fat. Okay? So, you know, I, I, in fact, let me just go to, okay, let me finish that point. Studies have shown actually that COVID thrives where there's like fat cells. It's like the virus hijacks those and it's able to, to replicate itself and to build itself up. So we want to actually watch what, we, what we're eating and also, we want to make sure we are rested enough because without enough rest, the immune system is depressed and the immune system actually is not at its best level. Again, this is something you can practically experiment yourself. Deprive yourself of sleep for two days and see how well you do. Okay. Some of us, we come to Sabbath or we come to church on Sabbath without enough sleep. The saints can tell that you did not sleep. All right? So these are things that are they're kind of like self-evident truths to us. And exercise as well boosts your immune system. Notice what uh, the scientists are discovering now. A plant-based diet may lower severity of COVID-19 infection by 73%. See, all this stuff is being reported in Europe, where they're like, hey, actually, if you eat right, it also helps to fight disease. Okay? Uh, and Dr. Caris will go into some of the, 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 some of the things, the supplements and stuff. And again, another report on Sky News was regular exercise may cut COVID-19 death risk by a third. That's a major study found this. And I was going through this with a friend and I said, this is beginning to sound like something I know. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then we were joking around, we were like, is it possible that maybe they've discovered new start and, and they're just making the news headlines based on that? Again, other factors, fresh air, pure water, and sunshine. Vitamin D, Dr. Chris is going to talk a lot about that later on. But these are some of, I'm just giving you 
a little glimpses of some of the things that will strengthen the immune system, okay? Now, the things that will weaken the immune system, high processed or refined fats and oils, that really is binding the strong man, okay? Then sugar, you know, I discovered the issue of, uh, of sugar before I actually discovered the issue of the health message. Um, I was working as a microbiologist in uh, British Petroleum, and I had a work colleague, her name was Natalie, and I noticed that whenever it was summer, Natalie would bring in all the cakes. So the cakes and everything, and we'd have a great time. Then when it got to winter, Natalie started bringing oranges and apples. And I said to her, Natalie, what, what's going on? And she said, well, listen, I noticed something. If I eat my cakes in winter, I get sick very quickly. But if I eat oranges in winter, I seem to, to get through without, without any sickness. And I was like, wow, that's very interesting. We never bothered to look at it more like, hey, what's, what's the thing here? But later on, as I'm studying this, I discovered that actually sugar depresses your immune system. Okay? And have you ever noticed that the flu season tends to be after you've had a great time of, say, when they have the Halloween, the trick-or-treating? Next thing is flu season. Easter time, after they've had all those sweets, next thing is we have a round of flu. Thanksgiving, we kind of have our uh, sweets kind of like overload. Then suddenly, flu season kind of hits in again. So there's an interesting correlation between the, what sugar is able to do, and it actually inactivates the phagocytes, which are these white blood cell warriors that deal with, with bacteria and all these things. Alcohol and tobacco also depresses the immune system. It was interesting in South Africa when COVID restrictions came in, the government put a ban on alcohol. And of course, the masses were very outraged at first. But then amazingly enough, people were not getting, it's like flu season kind of disappeared during COVID time, which was interesting, right? I have a friend who was telling me that now actually he, he discovered last year by wearing the mask that he didn't get a cold for the first time in his life. So he told me, so I'm going to stick with the mask now even if COVID goes away, right? And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um, but also, there's this study, Scientific America has been looking at why are people with obesity more vulnerable to COVID? And they're seeing that, again, the link between what COVID actually strives on, Okay. So the, the appeal and the principle here is we need to weaken the things that help the virus. And then we need to strengthen the things that help our own immune systems, okay? Uh, again, some of the other factors as well. Overuse of prescription medicine. So we need to understand, if we're on medications, we need to understand the side effects. And you can sit down with your doctor. By God's grace, you have a good doctor. You ask them, doc, tell me, what are the side effects of this? Is this going to help me during this pandemic? And hopefully the doctor will be honest and open with that. Also, our mindset. One of the things that did not help, and Kindra will deal with the mental health aspect, was the fear that was injected into the masses. Because Ministry of Healing tells us that things like fear, depression, uh, anxiety, all these things actually work against us and they invite disease. So as much as people were trying to help, the fear was actually causing even more cases because the immune systems were, were depressed and people became more uh, susceptible to that. We also have illicit drugs. Drugs are never good for you. They're just going to make it worse. And of course, one of the things that came out during COVID was you'll notice the, at least early on, the young people were not affected as much as the older people. The Bible says two heads are better than one. When it comes to our immune system, we also have two heads. We have what is called the innate system and what is called the adaptive immune system. Now, what is interesting is the younger you are, uh, sorry, the innate system actually is more kind of active and strong the younger you are. 
as you get older and with age, the innate system is actually kind of less functional. But some of the hydrotherapies Dr. Caris will talk about will deal with how does that affect, and in most of the cases for the older folks, the issue is we need to help the innate system to actually be boosted up a little bit. And again, Councils on Health 90, paragraph 2, it says, pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power, these are the true remedies. Every person, how many? Every person. If you're sitting in this room, you are a person. If you exist, you are a person. This says every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to apply them. Okay? It is essential both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and to have a practical training that will enable one to rightly use this knowledge. Okay. So it's important. We as, as Adventists, we need to know how to help people also to be physically well. How to use nature's remedies, the true remedies, to help people to get better. Physically, mentally. Now the spiritual aspect, we, we have the Bible, but also spiritually it helps us as well. By the way, keep in mind that no remedy heals you. God is the one that heals. Remedies are just tools that he uses, but God is the healer. The remedy is just the agency. So we don't want to end up worshiping remedies and saying that this remedy will heal you. No, God is the healer, okay? Now, I'm going to share with you some stories. This is uh, one of the pastors at my church. His name is Wilbur Atwood. Now, Pastor Atwood happens to tick every single category for the type of person who, if he were to get COVID, he would die. Now, they say that those who are at greater risk for severe complications are those who are elderly. Pastor Atwood is 78, if I'm not mistaken. And those who have other illnesses, such as heart disease, diabetes, and lung disease, he actually, from a childhood, has had like a lung, lung disease, Okay. Now, Pastor Atwood ended up getting COVID. And uh, he was down for, how many weeks was he down for? Is it about two, three weeks? Three weeks? Okay, three weeks. And during the, that time, um, you know, they asked him, does he want to go to hospital? He said no. His wife was doing some hydrotherapies, and uh, they were working also on his nutrition. And some of those basic foundational things I had before on there, and in three weeks, Pastor Atwood made a complete recovery. Right. We also have another lady, we call her Grandma Jean. She's 101 years old, and she has recently beat COVID as well. Now, I looked at Grandma Jean, and I said, Grandma Jean, in all fairness, your immune system is 101 years old. It's had many battles, and it has won many battles, so of course it's going to beat this thing. But some of us, those younger immune systems, they're, they're not just up to the task. But, uh, you know, I was just jesting in, in that light. But the question is, how come some people are able to basically deal with this thing not in the kind of like um, troublesome way that it has, it has caused? On our campus, so Wildwood is a health institute. We do have a school. We, we have um, different lifestyle guests that come in. Last year in September, we had an outbreak. We had 31 cases of COVID. So we had 12 females. That age range was from nine. The youngest was nine. The oldest was 71 at the time. And they all had COVID and uh, all recovered speedily. Not a single one ended up in hospital by God's grace. We give God the, the glory for that. On the men's side, this was before Pastor Atwood was after this. So that's why you see the age range is up to 65. The youngest was a baby who was one year old, and the oldest was 65 from the men's side. And again, all recovered. Not a single one ended up in hospital. And as we started, I started looking at this like, why? What was the common denominator for all these people? Why did not, they, they not end up with like severe symptoms, at least for some? And one of the things that was actually the common link was their lifestyle. They all had more or less the same lifestyle factors. The little baby 
uh, the mom actually also did some, some treatments which are not so dangerous, if I can put it that way. Dr. Carice will show some practical hydro treatments. I'm weary of my time. But this led me to dig more into Adventist history in terms of Adventists and pandemics. And one of the most famous ones was the 1918 Spanish flu. Right? So this, this uh, Spanish flu was a pandemic that was sweeping around the world. As you see, that was a hospital with people that were affected at the time. It was almost like the COVID of their time. Now, one of the things that was interesting during this, there was a theological seminary called the Hutchinson, uh, I believe, oh, my notes are, are over there. This is in, is it Virginia? I think it was in Virginia. I, I don't think it still exists now. Now, in this school, they had some phenomenal um, issues. They had, I think, two-thirds of their school got the flu, the Spanish flu. And I'm going to put the, the slide up next. Um, so notice, oh, sorry, half of their, their, their body. So it's one example of how Adventists responded or cured at the Hutchinson Theological Seminary in Minnesota, not Virginia. Half of the 180 student body came down with the malady. The seminary practiced self-isolation, quarantining students as they became sick, and notice, focused on boosting immune systems. They strengthened the strong man, right? With a healthy diet and fermentation placed on the chest and abdomen. After students and staff improved, each patient was then quarantined for an additional five days to avoid the spread of the disease. The school also took steps to take care of people in the community. This is how the Adventists responded in 1918. Now, this is what the press, uh, the Hutchinson City Health Officer report, this man is non-Adventist. This was the world simply reporting what had gone on. He said more than 90 of 120 dorm students or faculty were diagnosed with influenza. So they all lived in the same place. And he says, okay, 90 of 120. The treatment of Dr. H.E. Larson, good nursing care, regulated diet, rest, which continued for two to five days after apparent recovery, no drugs, and hydrotherapy treatment of heat, cold to chest, throat, and abdomen, he says there were zero cases of pneumonia. There were no deaths. And in his words, the, the health officer, he said the record is remarkable. It makes the ordinary methods of dealing with the flu appear irrational. This is the world just saying, hey, listen, whatever this guy was doing, he, you know, the results were so remarkable. And again, they simply apply the principle of let's strengthen the immune system, let's weaken the things that were helping this influenza. And again, Jeremiah 6.16, I want you to notice this. My time is, is up now. It says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Now, my prayer is that Loganville will not say, we will not walk therein. But that we, by God's grace, we will say, okay, Lord, let's go back to those foundations. Let's strengthen the immune system. And let's weaken the things that will strengthen COVID. Okay? So, by God's grace... How many of us are willing to maybe do a little bit more study and look at it and say, okay, Lord, help us with this new start thing. Give us a new start during this pandemic. Amen. Okay? Amen. So let's pray. I think you told me 15 is when we finish. So, okay, we're, we're done now. All right. Any questions? We still have three minutes, actually. Any questions? Yes, Elder. Mm -hmm. With the Sabbath, the day of rest for rest. Have you noticed that? Ah. Resting in the Lord follows um, a trust in the Lord. Amen. We rest and we take to heart these eight laws of health. We will strengthen the strong man. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And again, 
just, okay, a little homework. So when we define health, what areas does health cover again? Okay, mental, I hear. Physical? Spiritual. Okay, okay, great class. So physical, mental, spiritual, three-dimensional. Just a little side note as we close. Did you know that the Sabbath also covers mental, physical, and spiritual? That's right. Think about it. Was Adam and, were Adam and Eve tired when they experienced the first Sabbath? No. They hadn't worked the six days yet. They were created on the sixth day. So think of it this way. If Adam was not physically tired, then the Sabbath has more than to do with just physical restoration. The Sabbath is about the whole being. As we spend time with God, God does mental health counseling with us. God does spiritual counseling with us. God does exercise with us. All right. So physical, mental, and spiritual. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that we deal with a God who cares about the whole being. We thank you, Father, that you have given us foundations that we can stand upon knowing full well that you are a God who is not taken by surprise by anything that happens in this world. And we pray, dear Father, that you would give us wisdom in how we deal with, whether it's the pandemics that come our way or whatever else that we deal with. We pray that you help us to, to grow in knowledge, to grow in our application of that which you have taught us, and that you would help us, Lord, to even be a blessing to those around us that need guidance and need also encouragement, and help us, Lord, not only to deal with just one aspect to be one-dimensional, but instead, by your grace, to be able to, to be a blessing to humanity in all three aspects. And I pray that even as we meditate upon the things we've covered this morning, that you would lay your blessing upon each individual in this room, that you would help their families, that you would also bless them with a faith that will be able to stand through any trial that comes their way. And I pray, Lord, that truly that song, um, Anywhere with Jesus, we can safely go, would become a reality in our experience. That even through COVID days, we can say anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Thank you so much, Father, as we transition to our main service. I pray that you would remain with us, that you would send your mighty angels in, in, in their multitudes to occupy these seats and to be with us. And let it be a blessing for us throughout the rest of this Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time.